Hey, what's up? It's Evan from photoextremist.com and in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to make this picture. The very first thing that I did is I took the picture using a camera and as you can see here, I have two flashes on light stands and a camera on a tripod. The camera was set to uh, 250th of a second and it was at like f4 or something like that my so 400 somewhere around there the reason why it's at 250 50th of a second is because i can have the lights on in the background and see what i'm doing but that light won't show up in my picture because the shutter speed is really fast these flashes are going to be the thing that is illuminating the picture so you can see everything not the ambient light that's completely eliminated from the fast shutter speed so next up is the lighting I have two flashes. This flash has a grid on it. So all the grid does is it just narrows the beam of light into a little pool and that pool is hitting my face directly and it wasn't really hitting the background because the beam is so narrow. Uh, if I didn't have the grid on, the light would go every which way, especially if I had the flash zoomed out all the way. It would just spread out a lot and it would leak into the background, which is not what I really wanted to do in this particular picture. And this flash, all these flashes are hooked up to wireless triggers. And there's a wireless trigger on my camera. So once I push the button, it'll send the flash signal over to this wireless trigger. And then my flash will flash in sync with the camera. Now this light is aimed toward the background. And there is a flash diffuser on the light. And there's just a red gel. Um, behind that diffuser. So I just lit the background red and I have a blue gel on this flash. I just sat in front of my camera here and then I pushed the button like this while looking directly into the flash like that. You can see that the red just fills the background, the blue hits my face and that's all it is. But the real magic happens inside of Photoshop. So let's go to the computer and start editing the pictures. Alrighty right, so I'm going to show you how to do this in Photoshop. The very first thing that you want to do is open your photo in Photoshop. You can do that by opening up the program and then dragging and dropping the file into this middle area here. After you got that done, it'll open up. And what I've done here is, here's the original photo straight from the camera. What I did is, first off, is I just kind of wanted to make the background a little bit darker. So what I did is I did that. I made it darker just like that. Now, um, you see these two layers here? You can darken your photo any way that you want to. There's lots of different ways to do it. The way I did it is I just uh, duplicated the layer. I went up here to Image Adjustments Black and White. And then I clicked a High Contrast Blue Filter. Because the blue filter will just filter out all the reds and make them very dark, as you can see here. Um, I could make the reds completely black if I wanted to, but I left a little bit in there just to give a little bit of detail. So that's what that layer is. And then I just did it again and I set the blending mode to multiply. Uh, and that's all that is. I just imported the photo and then made it a little bit darker. And now I move on to step two, which is making the cloud thing. Now in order to do this, in order to make the lines, you need to basically make a new layer. I'll make it up at the top here. Grab a brush tool. Dial in your settings of, of how wide you want your line to be. I'll just say, I'll make mine 11 pixels at a hardness at 100%. And then what you got to do is you got to grab, after you got that dialed in, you're going to want to grab your pen tool right there. And then make sure path is selected right there. You don't want shape, you want path. So make sure that's selected and then start drawing a shape of some sort. So once that's done, right click on the canvas, anywhere on the canvas, and then click stroke path. Then make sure brush is selected because those are the settings you had dialed in on the brush tool. And then you can, you can experiment with the simulate pressure. I'm going to leave that off for right now. And now you got your line. And then what you want to do is 
go to the paths window. If you don't have the paths channel set up, you can go to you can go up here to the top here and click window and then click paths and then you'll get this. But what I do is I just delete that. Um, so I can now see kind of what I'm doing. So we've got a line. But how do we make it all shiny and glowy and everything? Well, what I actually did is I made I like to make the lines kind of white, very bright in the middle. So I'll just paint this white really quick. Um, and then I like to duplicate the layer by dragging it down to this uh, little page icon down there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to color it a certain color. And then I'm going to blur it. But I want the blur, the blurry glow behind the white layer. So I've got that done. Now I'm just going to blur that blue layer. So I'm going to go to blur, Gaussian blur. You can do any blur you want to, box blur, whatever you want to do. And then just blur it until you can see it like that. So that's that's a nice blur. I kind of like them a little bit more, a little bit tight, but it doesn't really matter. You can select all the layers and then in the blending mode here, you can select uh, linear dodge add or color dodge. I kind of like color dodge. Or you can do lighten or screen. Any of, any, of the, any of these ones right here, these will all make the line brighter as you stack them on top of one another. And then what you can do is just keep on doing that a bunch of times. I'll duplicate those two layers again. Then I'm going to push control T on those two layers. And now I can just move those lines around do whatever I want with them really. I could right click while I'm in free transform mode and then mess around with the perspective if I wanted to. Um, all sorts of things. And then after you're all done editing, you can push enter. And then you have your trippy thing. So, and you may want to play with the blurs. You may want to make them different colors. You may want to uh, keep stacking the the blur to make it brighter or you just may want to change the color after the fact if you want and make it brighter or whatever you want to do so uh, that's what I did to make the lines so I got the lines all done but now we need to make um, a cloud so I'm gonna delete everything that I just did and now I'm gonna make a cloud so in order to do that you're gonna to wanna to make a new layer and then click filter render clouds and I'm gonna make that black and white really quick so you'll have your clouds all rendered out then what you're gonna to want to do or what I did is I pushed control T on that layer I right clicked on it and then clicked uh, scale and then I just scaled it down a bit and now I'm going to click uh, right click again and then click perspective and then just kind of make it so it looks like a, there's like a screen in front of my face kind of. Um, basically do that and now I can create a layer mask on top of, I mean on this layer, grab a brush, a black brush, and then just start kind of fading out the edges. Um, this is just what I did but you, there's lots of different ways to make the same picture. You can use lots of different tools, whatever you want to do. Um, but I just did that and then you can use the burn tool as well. And then you can select the shadows, midtones, or highlights. You're probably going to want to focus on, well, you can try all three, but you, with this, it just acts a little bit more contrasty when you burn it out and it doesn't look as ghostly, so to say. So. I did that several times and I also duplicated that layer several times and I changed the blending modes to different blending modes like multiply and different things like that. And what I also did is I pushed control T and then I held down shift and alt and then I resized the photo just like that. So it kind of made like a duplicate um, of, the, of the same thing. I could even do it again. I could duplicate the layer again, push control T, 
and then resize it by holding down alt and shift at the same time and then going in like that. And that just made like a cool ghostly copy where it just kind of repeats itself. It's kind of like a pattern. And again, you can change the blending modes on all of these different uh, layers to get different effects. Right now, all of them are on multiply except the bottom one. So it gets, uh, when you're on multiply, all the black colors will just make the picture uh, darker and the white colors will be ignored. So I did that several times to make the cloud. And I also maybe change the colors a, a bit. And then you get this. And you can also use the dodge tool um, after the fact while you're doing this as well. So this is basically what I did. You can see all the different things here. So there's a shape, there's a shape. I kept adding shapes, making them different colors, etc. Adding the clouds in. And that was like a color layer, just changing a color in a certain spot. And then just making all those lines. And then that's what that whole layer is. So I'll turn all these layers back on again. But then we got the eyes, the little extra things. Yeah, what I did is I added reflections in the eyes because that's kind of important. That's what really makes the picture. Um, what I did actually is I copied everything that I made with the cloud. I duplicated that group and then I pressed control T on that group and shrunk it really, really, really small. And then I just made it so you can see a reflection there. Here it is with it on here it is with it off now I don't know why there's like little yellow stuff showing up on the edges right here that shouldn't be like that I'll probably fix that later but that's basically how I made the reflections in the eyes and then you're gonna probably want this blending mode to be on uh, either normal or light and screen color dot any of these ones right here because these lighten up the picture when you put a new layer on top of the old layer and then I did the same thing with the right eye as well so here it is with it off. It looks very dull, lifeless. But with it on it, you just get that sparkle, that glow that brings everything alive. And then I dodged the eyes a little bit, just a little. Or I actually just painted regular colors on the canvas, but I, I had the blending mode to be on color dodge. So I could do that right now. Uh, but because the blending mode is on color dodge, it just kind of makes everything brighter. It gives it that kick. So that's what that layer was. And then last, I changed the color. How did I do that? What I did is I went, I'll just turn this layer off right now. I went down here to the adjustment layers and then I clicked color lookup. Now you can do this exact same thing like if you want to specify a certain layer to apply your color to. You could go to image, I got to select a layer really quick, I'll just select this one. You could select a, your layer right there and then go to image adjustments color lookup and then apply the color that way if you wanted to. But I just did it up here using an, an adjustment layer and then what, when the adjustment layer is on the very top it makes all the layers below it the that color or that adjustment that you just applied. So what I did is I went to the adjustment layers, click color lookup, and then I went to the one right here that says smoky. I clicked that and then I called it good. So, and I thought that color, I always do that with certain pictures where um, I want there to be like a certain mood, cinematic effect to the photo because the colors are kind of important. It really does add with with this picture, it's just, it's very, very blue. It still looks cool, but it's just a little too um, saturated and extreme for me. And that's odd because I go by the photo extremist, but this just looks better to me. It looks more kind of, a, it gives it a softer look and it's just more pleasing to the eye. So that is how to make that picture. If you would like to get more of my tutorials, you can visit my website. It's called photoextremist.com. 
And I also have a photography course up called Trick Photography Book. And in that course, there's nine hours of video going over lots of different trick photos that you can do with and without Photoshop. And later this year, I'm going to be releasing another course that goes over the basics of photography, the fundamentals, the things that you need to know in principle to have your inner mindset um, prepared for the demanding challenges that lie ahead. So, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.